first of all, welcome and thank you to everyone who's participating in uh, the mentoring cohort for this round. We've done one cohort um, already and we got just really great feedback um, from the participants and, and some constructive feedback to help us structure things so that there's a little more direction, um, a little more, a uh, few more resources and a little more structure overall. Um, that said, we've left it fairly open um, and you'll see that as we go through today. So. Um, for the kickoff today, we are going to start out with uh, a welcome message from Daryl Brown. We're really happy to have him here. And then I'm just going to run through um, the program expectations. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about a specific resource that we have available called StrengthsFinder. Um, just a very brief overview of that. Um, and then we'll have time for Q&A. So we'll keep it short and sweet and plan on being out of here in half an hour or less. So with that in mind, I'll just turn the time over to Daryl. Thank you, Beth. Um, thank you. I, how many here are mentors and how many are mentees? Mentors. mentors, mostly mentors. So, all right, and welcome to all those joining by phone. And uh, to those, I'll look in the camera here that will be watching this later. Um, the Mentor program is just another example of the various things that we've been trying to do at Bonneville uh, to improve our efforts to develop our people. I think you're all aware of the various programs we have going on with the committee work that's being done. We have a spoken word committee, a music committee, a sales committee. Um, how many others do we have? There's, there's some other ones I'm not thinking of right now, but several of those that have provided a forum for people to provide expertise and input and also build relationships across the market, so I think has really been good. Uh, we also have a leadership development program that we've initiated where we're trying to develop the next generation of leaders. And uh, some of you are already participating in that and we'll rotate that through just the same way we're doing these various cohorts for the mentor program. We've also initiated the, um, the recognition program of uh, Bonneville's Best and Above and Beyond to recognize employees that are, are doing amazing work and really are exceeding. So I personally want to thank each of you for your interest in developing yourselves and for the mentors in particular of giving your time and your experience to benefit those in the organization that are coming up and trying to learn uh, the very a various aspects of their jobs, but also how to navigate within companies and how to work across departments. I think it's really important training. So thank you for the mentors. And to the mentees, I would say that the burden of this responsibility really falls to you. And I congratulate you for coming forward and being willing to be mentees and recognize that this is an investment in your own development. So um, congratulations on that. But I, I would just encourage you to be vocal and work with your mentors to uh, get the most out of this program as you go forward. Um, I think about the power of mentors. And I've thought about, uh, when I talked to Beth yesterday, I, I, I thought about people in my life that have been mentors to me. And in the business in particular, I had a mentor by the name of Ed Quinn, who I ended up working for for 22 years. And I really started to think last night about what it was um, that he did as a mentor uh, that helped me so much. Because uh, he taught me aspects of the business that I didn't know, that I needed to know if I wanted to grow and develop within the industry. And the one thing that he gave me was stretch assignments. He had me do things that in my current position I didn't have exposure to and allowed me to go do some of those things. And I remember the very first one is he asked me to negotiate a syndicated programming contract for NYPD Blue to air on the San Diego station um, that we owned at the time. And I was scared to death, uh, but I came out of it okay, and I think we got a decent deal on the show. But I learned a tremendous amount from that. Um, I think of my own parents as mentors. I remember something that um, was probably an off-the-cuff comment that my mother made to me 
but had a real profound influence in how I thought about what I wanted to do in my life. And she said, you know, y you have a good way with people and you should probably do something where a lot of people are involved. <laughs> and and uh, I, I've always remembered that and it was just such a simple bit of advice. Um, but, you know, engineering is not for me. <laughs> I'm more of a social person, so I think that advice served me well over the years. And uh, there have been others in my life that have, have said things or put their arm around me and gave me the encouragement I needed to, to do things I was uncomfortable doing. And so uh, I think the mentor-mentee program can do that for, for all of you. So, uh, as you know, you get out of this what you put into it. Um, and I would say for the mentors, while you have the more, uh, the greater experience here and you're trying to train someone or impart advice, you can also learn um, from the mentees, especially in those situations where we have uh, people that are in different cities. There are different ways of doing things in different markets, um, and I think we can learn from each other that way. And the last thing I would just say about this program, one of the values is, um, uh, is the power of building relationships with individuals. That we have computer systems, we have our own internal systems of the way we do things. Uh, none of that is as valuable as having a powerful relationship and a network of people that you can draw upon in those times when you're struggling with a decision or a business problem that you need to solve. And having the advice of, of this outside network is really, really powerful. Uh, it's something that I've uh, invested a lot of time and effort in over my career of building a network, not only with, within the building or within the company, as it may be, uh, but also outside, uh, serving on boards, serving on committees within the industry, I think is really, really important to you. So I wish you well as you embark on this effort. I'm really interested to hear some of the success stories and some of the things that are going well. I hope we can publish those on the Bonneville Hub so others can see it and benefit from it and that we can keep this program moving forward. So thank you for, for your efforts and your willingness to participate. Thanks. Well said, um, and I very much agree. I've had really, I would say, really profoundly impactful experiences myself with mentoring, being a mentee. Um, so I am extra grateful for those who've been willing to um, share their expertise. And really grounding again in the purpose of what we're trying to do here, it's, it's development of skills and relationships and, and leadership attributes for both mentors and mentees. It's not a one-sided relationship. Um, it shouldn't be in any case. Um, and, and again, um, I think Daryl made a, a wonderful point. We've got a six-month timeline for this engagement, but ideally the relationships and connections that we start to form, especially across markets and across functions, um, will last beyond that. So that's something that, again, I found impactful in my own career where I was um, part of two different formal mentoring engagements, but was able to come back um, to those mentors informally um, afterwards. So, so have that in mind, that we're thinking about making progress in our careers, developing ourselves professionally and frankly, personally as well. Um, that, that should be a byproduct of this. Um, and just in terms of, of really nuts and bolts expectations uh, for these six months, we expect about a once a month um, meeting cadence. We'll leave it to you to manage that. Let me highly, highly recommend uh, a recurring meeting <laughs> as a tool to just get it on the calendar because life is so busy. And this is one of those things that because it's not um, maybe something that you're getting evaluated on or um, that's earning us revenue or ratings directly um, can get pushed by the wayside. So put it on the calendar and, and make it a priority uh, going forward. You'll hear from, um, from us periodically to fill out uh, a quick click survey. We call it like a three question survey every so often. Um, maybe once a month, maybe a little less frequently than that, just to see how things are going. Um, when we did that in the previous cohort, we were getting good um, suggestions for things that we could do along the way. So um, if you've got feedback about things that are going well or ideas that you have 
um, please share those through the surveys or reach out directly to me or another HR partner. Um, but, but plan on that and please respond as, as appropriate. Um, something that, that people have had a lot of questions, I'm now on the slide that says uh, roles and responsibilities um, with the orange table for those of you um, on the phone. We've talked about this as the onus is really on the mentee. So it's, it's one of those things where it's like, congratulations, you, <laughs> you get this opportunity and you're going to have to do some more work um, to bring it to, to kind of full fruition. Um, really be thoughtful about what you want to get out of the next six months. Uh, depending on who you're paired with and depending on what's happening in your life at work right now, it may be something quite technical. It may be something that's project-based where you want somebody to, to be a sounding board. It may be more of a general skills development, practicing pitches, um, or it may be more of a, a kind of nebulous leadership development type of thing or communication skills, um, working through a, a recurring type of conflict that might come up in your role. Those are all things that you might want to sit down and articulate as a goal, but I would very highly recommend that you put some thought into that goal setting and be able to articulate what you're looking to get out of this. It may change as you start meeting with your mentor, and that's fine, um, but I think it is important to be thoughtful about that. And, and then as you come into your meetings, just be prepared. And I remember this feeling of <laughs> getting ready for my mentoring meetups, and I'd be like, oh, okay, I got to... I got to really think about what are we going to talk about? What questions do I have? And sometimes it was just like a five minute, just check in. Hey, I have this one question. I'm still working on this other stuff that we talked about. And, and there you go. And if that happens, that's fine. There's no mandate that you have to meet for you know, an hour or, or whatever it is. So be flexible and be, um, make it meaningful for, for what your goals are and what you're working on and what comes out of each meeting in succession. Um, but do follow up, do be, um, accountable for the things that you agree to, to work on with your mentor. If they give you kind of little homework assignments or, or actions to work on, um, be diligent with those because obviously you'll get more out of it if you, if you do that on the mentee side. And kind of on the complementary side of, of being the mentor, be available. Um, that's honestly one of the biggest ones. We know that the people that we ask to be mentors are very busy. Um, and we appreciate that, but, but make sure you make yourself available. Um, be thoughtful as well. Be thinking about, as you're out um, in your kind of day-to-day, -day, try and make a point of thinking about, about things that you could bring into your mentoring engagements. If you can bring a mentee into a meeting or introduce them to someone, um, all the better. There, there's any number of, of ways that you can provide meaningful resources to a mentee. So just be please be thoughtful, please be thinking about this on an ongoing basis and don't think about it as just a meeting you have to get through once a month. Um, this has already gone out, so I'm not going to go over this in detail, but um, this is essentially just a checklist of things on the next slide to, to have prepared before your first meeting. Some of you have already reached out and that is great. I've, I've been hearing here and there from people who've, who've already reached out to their mentors, um, but, but get yourself prepared. Now, um, I'm just going to touch on this and I'll come back to it in a second, but I want it to be clear because I think it wasn't clear for our previous cohort and it caused some stress. StrengthsFinder is not required. It's not some um, magical thing <laughs> that you have to do in order to have a, a successful mentoring experience. It's a tool that I personally like um, and it's, it's fairly easy to use. So I'll talk more about what it is, but just know that it's optional. It's either great as a get to know you or it can be actually used as a framework for a development plan for the mentoring engagement. Um, a little more nuts and bolts. I, I just want to be planting some seeds of ideas for activities that you may um, want to try. Um, as, as you're going forward in your mentoring um, meetings. I had, a, I had a really wonderful experience once um, with a mentor that I had who was actually based in Germany. So for those of you who feel like it's hard to meet across um, <laughs> an hour time zone difference, one of my mentors was in Germany and one was in Spain. So, um, and I was in California. So I appreciate the challenge of, of the scheduling, but I had this wonderful mentor in Germany who was an HR executive, and I had a really great idea for an HR project um, to revamp 
kind of onboarding that we were doing at this company. And so I got my thoughts together. I got kind of a skeleton of a pitch for this project. And I, I went to her as the first person to test my idea with. And the feedback that she gave me was so valuable because she had been around the company long enough. She knew kind of the wider context that I was operating in. And she was able to anticipate um, challenges that I would, would definitely um, encounter if I, if I went forward with that project. So that's, that's an example. If you've got an idea for something that you want to try, think of your mentor as like a 100% safe space where you can put out any crazy idea. You can talk to them about um, problems that you may not feel comfortable addressing with a manager directly or, or something like that. Um, and mentors, please treat this as, as um, again, kind of that, that safe space where you're, you're listening, you're providing advice, and, and not really judging. You're not evaluating. You're trying to help them work through um, whatever it might be. Um, I talked about introductions. I talked about kind of almost a job shadow type of thing if you, if you want to bring your mentee into a meeting. Um, we've had examples of people sharing, as Daryl mentioned, sharing best practices across markets already um, with this cohort, I'm aware of, of one example of that. So um, there are any number of ways, I'm not going to read through them all, you can see them on the slide where it says example activities. Um, but be, again, be thoughtful, be creative. It's not just sit down and, and ask, well, how did you get to where you are in your career? And, What's your advice about X, Y, or Z? Which can be great. That can be great to have those, those conversations. And depending on where you are in your career, it might be just exceptionally valuable to just sit and, and talk through um, kind of advice and Q&A type of thing. But it's not the only thing that you, you can do. There's a lot more. Um, and then the last thing for me before we go to Q&A is to talk a little bit about this StrengthsFinder tool. So, I wanted something to, to supplement just saying, hey, go, go be mentored. Good luck to you. Have fun. Um, StrengthsFinder is um, it's an assessment. It's kind of a personality test. It's not going to tell you um, everything about yourself and, and unlock all the secrets of your life. But as you answer this battery of questions, it will provide for you a profile of yourself of strengths that you have, um, and they order it, you know, one to like 32, um, your top down to the, the least strong strengths <laughs> that you have. Um, it's a strengths-based uh, psychology <laughs> approach, right? So it's very positive. It's framing um, the things that we do, the motivations we have, the way that we like to work and communicate and interact um, from a perspective that we all have strengths, they're unique, and we should leverage them. Um, we should apply them as much as we can, and especially at work, we should find ways to do our work in a way that uses our strengths as much as possible, recognizing that there are things that, like, for example, I have to work in spreadsheets. That is not one of my strengths, but I have to do it. So you're never going to get away from that. But um, it, it's an interesting exercise because, first of all, it's a great way, like I said, to get to know somebody. So you could go through, do the assessment, and sit down and say, these are my top five strengths. These are these are characteristics. This is really where I see this theme exhibited in my life. I know that this is true, this not so much. And, and it's just a nice kind of icebreaker, and that's great. Um, but what you can also do um, is brainstorm ideas for action. And, and you've got in your um, mentoring guide really a bare bones development um, plan, like a framework that you could use based on your strengths finder assessment, if you choose. So, Take that as far as you want to take it, um, and that will be driven by the mentee. So mentors, if your mentee says, like, I've gone through this, I think it's, you know, a bunch of bunk and I'm not really interested, then you don't have to use it. Um, but if your mentee is interested, or um, um, whether from a get to know you perspective or a development plan perspective, plan on, plan on using it and taking the assessment. It takes like 20 minutes. And then you get a little report it spits out. And so you'll be getting a book with the, the code and the website and everything to do that. It's fairly self-explanatory. Um, you can anticipate the results that you'll get. Um, they break it up into these three sections. This is the second strengths finder slide. Um, awareness, application, and achievement. So awareness is the description, again, of, of what are these strengths. My number one strength, by the way, is adaptability. It means that I can really like pivot. I can roll with the punches. It also means that I don't like to plan very much. <laughs> so <laughs> it's an interesting exercise in self-awareness. Um, and then application, 
um, again, thinking of questions of how you can apply whatever it is, if it's adaptability, if it's um, being very results driven, competitive is one of the strengths um, that I don't have, by the way. And then achievement is kind of a testimonial where people describe um, with their own strengths, how they manifest themselves in their work. Um, that's StrengthsFinder in a nutshell. Take it for what it's worth. I really enjoy it. Um, I've used it also with teams where we kind of create a team strengths profile and compare ourselves. It, it can be really um, a great exercise and a, a great way to get to know each other. So that is a very uh, rapid fire summary of what we're expecting from our mentees and mentors over the next six months and, and our, our resources and tools. You've got the, the mentoring resource guide in front of you. Um, and that also includes a, a sample agenda for uh, a mentoring meeting. So use that and apply it if it's, if it's something that you feel would be relevant to you. Um, with that, I'm going to stop and invite any questions, including from anyone on the phone um, or anybody in the room, but any questions as we get ready for um, your mentoring engagements. How do we measure success here? Um, I, I'm going to let Daryl address this if he wants to. I will say, based on the feedback that we receive from the survey, um, if we see connection, uh, going back to the, the purpose slide, if you think about developing relationships, skills, and attributes. So at the end of this, if our mentees and mentors are able to say, yes, I progressed in a relationship, I progressed in some skills and awareness, or I progressed in developing an attribute that I think will be beneficial to me at work and, and in developing my career. So it's, it's qualitative for sure. Um, we do ask a question, would you recommend this to a colleague? And um, we got overwhelmingly positive feedback in, in that criteria um, from the previous cohort. So that, that would also be a measure, a more uh, quantitative measure. I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that, Daryl. I, I, I think that's well said. Um, I would just add that if that relationship continues beyond the six months, as has already been said, to me, that's the real indicator of success because there's there's a definite relationship. Because during the six-month window, you may not have some issues that come up that you really need help with. You'll get the value out of building the relationship and talking about you know challenges. But there's nothing like having someone to call when you're really under the gun and focused on trying to solve a business problem. And to be able to call someone like that, you've probably all experienced that already at some point. And just the value to free up your mind and get additional input, um, you know, to use someone else as a sounding board is, to me, that would be the ultimate success of it. And hopefully you could hear that on the phone, but Daryl was, was pointing out that if the relationships are able to continue beyond the six month engagement where the mentor is someone that you can call on assuming, because not everything you're going to need advice on is going to come up in the next six months. Trust me. So another measure of success there. Any questions from anyone in Phoenix, Denver, or Seattle? If you do think of any, please reach out um, either to myself or your, your HR partner in the market. Um, and just know, again, we congratulate you and we thank you um, both for your willingness to, to invest in, in this initiative. Um, and we expect to hear great things. Again, please be sharing feedback if there's anything that comes up that you think might benefit the, the other members of the cohort, because we'll be sharing that information ongoing. So have a great rest of your day, and, and thanks for everyone for joining on the phone.